I've just arrived in LA to go and see iJustine. Very excited about that. I've just had a 17 hour flight from Dubai, which was pretty hardcore. I had extra leg room seats, so it wasn't so bad, but um, there's only so much time you can sit down for, right? Vlogging university, here we go. Welcome to LA, baby. So you just request an Uber and it automatically knows that you're here and you pay straight away. It processes the payment right away, gives you a code and then you just join a line and then you give the code to any driver. How good is that? We need that in London. so excited about lying on this bed. I can't tell you how amazing it feels to lie down, honestly. It's just really tough to sleep when you're upright, even when you recline the seat. I don't know how it's humanly possible. You would never sit in an armchair at home for 17 hours. I was actually dreaming, I was thinking about how nice it would feel to have my legs supported. I just wanted to put my legs up on something and there was nothing. I did start to actually think and fantasize about a soft bed. And I was just like, as soon as I get into that hotel room, I'm gonna just lie down on it. And it hasn't disappointed. Apologies if I look really rough. I've been traveling for basically 23 hours. The same time it took me to get to Australia from London. So that's crazy. But it was, at least it was one flight and not two. I'm in Beverly Hills. I can't believe it. I'm actually in LA. It's so ridiculously nuts. I've never been here before. I've been to Miami and I've been to New York, but I've never been to LA. I've always thought about coming here. It's just where everything that I see on TV is from. All the movies are from here. The people are from here. The celebrities are from here. I've heard so many amazing things about it. So to actually be here is kind of surreal. I was just driving past mansions and stuff and I was just thinking, who lives in that house? I want to see where Vanderpump lives. So my view is not like wow crazy amazing or anything but I don't really care because I'm not going to be in this room for like much time at all. Um, that's actually there. That is Santa Monica Boulevard. <laughs> I'm on Santa Monica Boulevard. It's just so crazy. I bet there are celebrities up there that I know. Housewives and people like that. Anyway, this is Santa Monica. I'm washed and showered and I'm going to get an in and out burger. No. I'm doing it right now. I just thought, first night, get it done, and then if it's amazing, I can have it again and again and again and again. I've just ordered a double, double burger, fries, and a drink, and then I suddenly had a panic. I haven't ordered a milkshake, and I probably thought I should try it, so I've got a strawberry milkshake as well. I've mixed my Coke with root beer. I just thought it might taste a bit better. Diet Coke's not great here. Sorry, America, but it's not. Mm. <laughs> That's a damn good burger. It's really, really good. Now I went for the double double burger, which is basically double patties, double cheese. It was very, very cheesy. If you like cheese, this is definitely the burger to go for. All round, fantastic burger. I was really impressed. That was literally the best burger I've ever eaten in my life. That was such an amazing experience. I think what I like about the burgers is that they're really thin. So they're like, kind of like a McDonald's burger in the, the patty is really thin, but obviously a lot better than McDonald's. Um, just amazing, the sauce was amazing, the onions are amazing, the bun's amazing, the fries were really good, everything about it was amazing. Yum. So I'm in, I'm in the Beverly Center, in Beverly Hills, funnily enough. Um, I've come to get a hard shell case for my, for my new Mac, my 16 inch Mac Pro, because nowhere in Dubai has them and they're not gonna have them for months apparently even in the Apple store. Somehow, here they do, apparently. So, we'll see how we go. They didn't have any cases. It's so annoying. How is it that this thing was launched months ago 
and no one's brought any cases out. How? How's that happened? It's like the longest it's ever been for any case for any product. So after a very long day, I went home to bed. I'm getting a little bit worried about the fact that it's so windy. Why is it that as soon as I start filming, someone decides to drill? I'm getting a bit windy. I'm getting a bit windy. <laughs> I'm getting a bit concerned about the wind. I just tried calling Six Flags, but they're not open until nine and I need to leave. But it said that they have a no refund policy for wind and stuff. And I don't know if it's meant to be the same tomorrow. So I'm just gonna look at the weather online and just see I might be able to change it for my ticket to tomorrow. Of all the times this happened, it happens now. It's just so typical. We've arrived. Oh my God, how exciting is this? I just saw Tatsu going, so I think the wind hasn't stopped it yet. This is the exciting moment. It's not going well. Firstly, I can't download the PDF from my iCloud files. Basically, my tickets aren't working, so that's great. And secondly, I bought my Osmo Mobile with me. I didn't know that you couldn't take it in, and that's fine, I get that. They won't keep it for me anywhere. Even at like security, they've got like a security office, they won't keep it. They're like, you have to take it back to your car or you can't come in. And I said, well, I've just come all the way from LA in an Uber. It's like $150 this thing I'm not gonna just and they're like well you just have to throw it away then so I've literally come outside of the park and I'm trying to find somewhere to hide it like in a bush or something so that I can like just go into the park and then pick it up when I come back so hopefully I can do that we'll see what a pain in the Osmo is now in a bush by a bench hopefully it will still be there when I get back who knows okay I'm finally in I'm in six months country now just going to get my flash pass now probably won't need it at all because it's dead but there we go i have one anyway so apparently the rides that may close if it gets windy are tatsu and superman tower thing and x2 i don't know if x2 is running but i know tatsu is running because i've just seen it going that's my biggest want for the day is to go on tatsu fingers crossed it's open i would love to go on x2 because x2 i think it's a two of a kind maybe there's three in the world now it's really really rare and it's a really crazy ride but I have been on Ijanaika in Tokyo so if I don't get on that today it's not the end of the world because it's basically the same ride so yeah X2 is closed which is a shame but I know what the experience is like I queued for four and a half hours for it in Japan this ride is epic look how high that is it's insane here we go Ninja, which is an aerodynamic um, inverted coaster, which is quite rare these days because most of them have closed down. Light Ninja. It's a little bit bumpy and it's arrow for Christ's sake so of course it is. They're notorious for being a bit intense and that's why a lot of them closed down because the track just wore quite badly because the cars swing puts a lot of stresses on the track. Having said that I was expecting it to be a lot more bumpy than it was so I actually really enjoyed that it was really good. Um, it's not often that you see one of those coasters so you kind of have to grab the opportunity and get the credit when when you see it really. Yeah 
good fun. I'm not doing it a second time. I've done it, I don't need to do it again. On to other things. So now I'm doing Superman Escape. Slightly nervous, but I'm looking forward to it. Superman Escape from Krypton was awesome. Apparently it used to go forwards and now it goes backwards and it's not as good, but it was still really good fun. It's really good when you kind of get forced up and then you're kind of just hanging there looking back down at where you're gonna go. Now I'm gonna try Gold Rusher. It looks rubbish, but I'm gonna try it. That's really unfair. Gold Rusher is one of the original rides to open with the park in 1971. It's not one of the biggest roller coasters there, but it's quite unique and it's actually a really fun ride. So this is the new ride that's just opened. Um, at Six Flags Magic Mountain called West Coast Racers. It's a racing coaster, it looks awesome. I just saw it going. It's not been running every day, but it's running today, which is amazing. Here we go. gone for some tacos. Don't know if they're any good. I was reading best food in LA, Mexican food, wherever you go. Now I know probably it doesn't count when you're in a theme park, but I thought I would try it. I didn't want to have a burger because nothing's going to compare to an In-N-Out burger, so there's no point having a burger anywhere now, apart from there. I didn't want pizza or chicken, and I just thought tacos, so I got them. So I've gone for chicken cilantro lime taco and the steak, the asada, um, and I got a coke mixed with Fanta, which is the best combo ever. If you haven't tried it, try it. That's a really good taco, actually. That's a really good guac. That salsa is kick-ass. It's really hot. I guess the sauces and condiments and stuff are going to be a really, really good here in California because it's so near to Mexico, so the expectation's high. Now it's time for Apocalypse which um, I don't know when this one was built. I think it, it looks quite new, maybe not actually, but it's just the smaller of the woodies that are here. But I'm looking forward to going on my first American woody because this is what these guys do best. Hopefully it's good. Nice bit of theming. An old truck cactus. It's nicely done this ride. Please Apocalypse was really good. I wasn't expecting it to be that intense. It has a real sting in its tail. It actually really packs a punch. It's a really good ride. It's, uh, it's called really, really fast. And there was me saying, because it's not that big, it wasn't gonna be that intense. I, I didn't actually say that, but you know, I said it was smaller. So next I went on Crazanity, which is the current world's tallest pendulum ride. It swings to a height of 17 stories which as you can see is pretty insane. Now, I don't normally get nervous before I go on rides, but I can tell you right now, when I was standing in that queue watching this thing go, I was crapping myself. But it was incredible and I enjoyed every second of it. It really was a rush. So now it is time for Batman the Ride. Um, a B&M classic. There's a few of them across the States. They were the first inverted B&M coasters. Batman the ride opened in the States somewhere and then we got Nemesis in the UK. I do just want to say, I think it's really awesome that Six Flags decided to make this a 365 park. So it's open all year. It's actually probably not 365, but it's, it's open winter as well. It's, it doesn't close. Um, it's great because it's just dead today. And I mean, I paid $100 for a bloody queue jump because I wasn't sure and I couldn't risk nothing to wait, but um, it's awesome because people just literally just walking on the rides. No one has to wait at all. It's just such a great idea.
that thing is intense. I love Nemesis Alton Towers and that's still always going to be my favourite B&M inverter just because of the way it's built into the ground and, and the theming of it. Um, and I think that's more interesting when you're going through tunnels and stuff. But this layout is really, really tight and um, it just it creates like a really intense, like it, it, I had to, I went on twice and I had to do my trainers up really tight the second time. Not because I was worried that my trainers were going to come off, but because the g-force is so insane that the blood was rushing so hard to my feet it felt like my feet were going to explode that's that's literally how i explain it on that ride nemesis it does not feel like that like on nemesis it doesn't hurt your feet this actually hurts your feet because the g-force is so high the first time i went on um, at the front and that's and that was awesome um, but it hurt my feet more at the front which is weird because the further you back you go uh, on a coaster, you usually get more positive Gs. Man, that was intense. Um, I got to the brake run, uh, the final brake run, and literally couldn't even see anything. It was I was so dizzy. But yeah, what an awesome ride. Um, a really amazing piece of engineering. And when you think about how old this ride is, how long ago it was designed, I mean, it's pretty amazing that for its time, they created a ride like that. It's really impressive. I'm about to get on this beast. I just want to apologise for not having that much off-ride footage of Goliath. I wanted to get some really nice shots of the lift hill on the first drop, but I completely forgot to go back after riding it. So Goliath was, was good, it was really good. I wasn't blown away by it though, for some reason. I'm a massive fan of Shambhala at Port Aventura in Spain. That's a B&M hypercoaster and it's silky smooth and just is magic. That is so loud. It's just magic how they do the bunny hops on Shambhala. So you get loads of air time. On Goliath, you just get to, you get the first drop then like the turnaround and then a second drop. There's just not that many hills on it before you go into that, that mid-track brake run. And then it's all kind of like tight helixes that give you insane amounts of Gs, which is fine, fine and it's fun and it's different. You know, it's good that there's a hypercoaster that is a bit different, but I just love the big dippiness of traditional hypercoasters. Next was my chance to ride Scream, a B&M Floorless Coaster. Now, a B&M Floorless Coaster is essentially a sit-down coaster, but the floor directly below your feet is removed. You get the feeling that your feet are gonna get chopped off, so it really does add to the thrill of the ride. Now, I love B&M coasters. They're my absolute favorite manufacturer. They're buttery smooth and nothing beats them. I really enjoyed my ride on screen. It was as smooth as I'd hoped, and I do love the B&M Flawless model, a definite upgrade on their previous sit-down coasters. My only real gripe is that Scream is simply built over an old car park with no theming or near miss elements to enrich the ride experience. I feel like this was a bit lazy and Six Flags should have paid more attention to these aspects when they designed Scream, like they have with all their other coasters in the park. Wow, wow, wow. Twisted Colossus. I think 100% the best ride in the park. Why does that always happen when I do this? Yeah, so Twisted Colossus, absolutely incredible. I didn't realise this was a hybrid coaster here. What was amazing is it was so smooth and the heels on it are insane. They're like beyond airtime. It's just like the negative Gs on that are off the scale. Amazing. And the fact that you've got no over the shoulder is just incredible. There's loads of hang time as well on the, on the inversions. Next was my penultimate coaster for the day, a Premier Rides launch coaster called Full Throttle. It features the world's largest loop, a forwards and reverse launch, so it was quite a unique layout and I was quite excited. It didn't disappoint and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's not the end. My last ride of the day was the Viper, a classic Arrow multi-looping steel coaster, and being honest, 
I'm not really a fan. The banking was way off, the transitions horrible, and the over-the-shoulder restraints painful. It was a definite headbanger. I don't want to be too harsh though. Arrow led the way with steel coasters, and if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be where we are today. The final roller coaster I went on was the New Revolution, which is the white and blue coaster you can see in the background. It opened to the public in 1976 and was the world's first looping coaster, and it's still a fantastic ride to this day. So it's time to go home. Um, I've done everything in the park here, apart from two roller coasters that I really wanted to do, which was X2, which was closed, I think for maintenance, but what a surprise, X2 is never open. The one I'm more gutted about is Riddler's Revenge, which is a B&M stand-up coaster. It's a shame that wasn't open, but it is what it is. Okay, I'm outside the park. I'm going back to the bench to see if my Osmo Mobile is still in a bush that I stashed it in. I'm really hoping it is it's 100 quid yes it is this is just a note to everyone if you come to a six flags park don't bring a selfie stick this apparently class is classed as a selfie stick don't bring one because you can't take it in and they won't keep it for you which is a little bit miserable i think but that's that's just how it is if you do just find a bush outside next to a bench and stash it i got really really sick in the car coming back from Six Flags, ironically. I think it's because I had the hangover sickness from going on all the coasters, but especially the Viper. The Viper, the Viper, which was... I get distracted very easily. Here I was waiting for an Uber, and I clearly can't do that and talk to you guys at the same time. I felt really sick, so I had to lie down, but then I started to get major FOMO, and I thought, do you know what? You need to go out and you need to carry on. So I went to Chick-fil-A and I sampled the menu there. Chick-fil-A, this is happening right now. So I think I'm gonna go for the deluxe and maybe the chicken nuggets. Not sure what to try really. So I've ordered the chicken deluxe burger, which is the chicken burger with cheese and, and salad and stuff in it. Um, I've gone for it non-spicy, so I wanna try, I wanna see what it tastes like and I'll try the spicy one another day. Um, I've also taken the advice of someone and ordered loads of different sauces because apparently it's all about the sauces here. Um, and then I've ordered some nuggets as well because I wanted to just try the, the nuggets. Going in with the nugget. Wow, that is amazing. So good. Now to try the sauces. This is the, the Chick-fil-A sauce. Let's see what this is like. Mmm. Not what I was expecting. Kind of Big Mac sauce, but sweeter. Sweeter than a Big Mac sauce, but kind of similar. Good fries. I like the waffle fry. Okay, now it's time for the burger. On the whole, I was very impressed with Chick-fil-A. The chicken and the crispy coating, both so delicious. All the sauces were amazing. They bring the whole thing together. Really great place. Yep, you did see that. A man with no pants, only his underwear. Welcome to LA. I need to take a car. On the way home, I stopped by a supermarket and tried to find some interesting American treats. So we're in the food aisle. What are we gonna find in here? All the peanut butter, look at it. This stuff's really famous. This place is nuts, look at all the cakes. This is all cakes, this whole section. Like cake, 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 sugar, sugar. It's amazing. So I'm looking for that spray cheese that you get like in a can, cheese in a can, dirty cheese in a can. Um, I don't know what section it's in. I don't know if it's refrigerated or if it's just on the shelf. They've even got Reese's, Reese's, um, like peanut butter chips that you put into cakes. Can you believe that? That's amazing, I might buy some. 
I've got some Reese's cups for the guys at work. They should be happy with that. I might get some other stuff too. So I bumped into this lady and I was drawn to her because she was carrying a chihuahua and I love dogs. And she said that she worked in the store, but it was her day off, so she was gonna help me. And she took me straight there and I got the spray cheese. Um, it wasn't in the fridge. <laughs> I didn't think it would be. A little bit worrying that it's not in the fridge, but I guess that's just because it's so processed, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna take that back and then make people try it with me. I'll do a separate video on that. Um, American treats. I also got some Reese's cups, some Reese's cups with little Reese's pieces in, some peppermint patties, um, some other sweets and American candies. Oh, some Jolly Rancho. Oh my God, I love Jolly Rancho and they're so expensive anywhere outside of the, the US. So I bought two big packs of those, but I'm now worried that I'm gonna be over my weight for my bag. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. Setting up this channel has always been a dream of mine, which is now finally coming true. I really want to make a success of this and I appreciate your support so much. So if you enjoyed part one, please hit the usual buttons below, like, subscribe, and click that bell to be notified when part two drops, where I'll be meeting Justine Ezerick and the Vlog University crew, bumping into one of my best friends that I haven't seen in years, and finally checking out Santa Monica. Stay safe and I'll catch you all next time.